Hello neighbors, it's Brad here at E-Trailer and today we're taking a look at installing the Airlift Load Lifter 5000 airbags for the rear axle on a 2020 Ford F-350 Super Duty. So we're out on our test course, we're going to hit some bumps and we don't have any weight in the bed. We have a fifth wheel in there and normally we load that up with 1500 pounds or so and you can really notice a difference. But you're not always going to have a load in your truck so we're going to drive it around just to see how it feels under normal driving. And a lot of times people say airbags are rough, and I don't know if that's necessarily the word. It's definitely a firm ride, but the ability to adjust that on the fly is really nice by letting pressure out so you can get a nice comfortable ride. And I think the thing is, is a firm ride is not a bad thing when you have a trailer or a camper or anything, even just dirt or something in the back, because being able to get your steering response back is gonna make towing just a lot better. I've driven lots of trucks that were squatted pretty bad when uh, towing a load and, and it gets real light and squirrely and your brakes are just not that great. And that's really the last thing you want when towing because you wanna have confidence in driving you're already looking at stuff in the back, making sure you're driving safely. So if you lose some of your steering feel, it just makes for a little bit less of a drive. And honestly, right now, just driving along, it rides pretty well, nice and smooth, no issues. Um, now again, because you can adjust it, the higher you put the PSI, it is gonna be a little bit more firm. And I think that's the thing is when you are towing, you're gonna sacrifice maybe a little bit of comfort but overall that suspension is able to do more because you're supplementing it. Uh, having those airbags be able to fill up means that the shocks are gonna have a full range of motion. So you're still getting suspension and in fact, you're allowing it to work a little bit more rather than a compressed suspension where that shock is just kind of bottomed out. And also that's gonna be part of the range of shock where it doesn't really go that low unless you're loaded down. So when you're compressing all that weight and it's already compressed, it's gonna prematurely wear that out. So among not only the driving feel the steering feel, the braking feel, your headlights being pointed uh, a little bit more normal. Just leveling the truck out overall is gonna be a better experience. And again, when you don't have weight in it, you're still gonna get a nice comfortable ride. So now that we got the drive with the bags installed and see how it, it performs out on the road, let's go ahead, we'll pull it in the shop, I'll put it up on the lift and we'll take a closer look at the components and how they work and some of the features. Today's trucks have really become a little bit more comfortable as far as daily driving. A lot of people use them as their primary vehicle and something like the 350 Super Duty is really capable of doing work when work is required. But with that comes the factory suspension sometimes gets a little bit under strain and just overwork, which can wear it out prematurely because you have jounce bumpers that look like this. So that takes a lot of suspension compression before this bottoms out. And at that point, the truck's already kind of sagging, which kind of brings up a number of different problems when driving. And when you're towing, that makes for an even scarier situation. So a few things that you might have is less steering feel because as the vehicle tilts up, you're not gonna have that contact patch on the front. You're also gonna have headlights that shine up a little bit higher. And also your braking feel is not gonna be great all while working your suspension in the rear pretty heavily. Seeing the factory Jones bumper against the airbags, you can obviously see that this fills that gap. And that's the great part about this is it's gonna fill it up. So this is gonna be doing the work before your shocks are squatted down here, because if this is loaded up, this is gonna be down here and you're gonna lose that movement of the shock. So this is really just gonna supplement your factory suspension. And in fact, this one has a 5,000 pound load capacity. You're not gonna gain 5,000 pounds, but this is what it can support. And that's gonna be great for a truck like this to give it a fighting chance and really get the most out of the suspension all while having a better driving experience. And the great part about airbags too is you do have some adjustability. So if you are just driving around, you don't have a load in the back or you're not towing a trailer, you wanna keep these at a five PSI uh, minimum and that's going to at least keep these bags supported you don't want them squished down all the way that can damage them and you have a maximum of 100 so if you have a slightly heavy trailer you can put them at 40 or 50 and fine tune it exactly where you want but if the load gets heavier you can always bump that up and you have that adjustability now the way that we've routed these are going to be a dual path system meaning you have individual control of each bag so if you have an off center load you also have the ability to account for that now these are gonna be a manual fill in this setup, meaning we have our Schrader valves right where our license plate uh, mounts up to, and we're gonna be manually filling that with an air compressor. Now, a lot of people will ask, do I need an onboard air compressor? The answer is no, but you do have the ability to add one in. And I think those are really nice to have because you can fill them up 
immediately. And there's actually wireless systems available that the install is super easy. You can use your phone to raise and lower, or you can actually have the gauge inside with the toggle switch. And either way, I really like those because you know exactly how much pressure is in the bag. Um, you don't have to rely on stopping at a gas station and having to check the PSI with the tire gauge. You really just have it right there. You have the control. So even if you want to do adjustments on the fly, you don't have to get out of your vehicle. You can simply do it from the comfort of driving your vehicle. Now, a lot of people ask me, what is the best suspension supplement for a vehicle? And uh, airbags is definitely one of the great options. And especially for a truck like this, he has a fifth wheel in the bed, so he uses a camper. And that's great because when he's just normally driving, he can have this low, I'm not gonna have to worry too much, but as that load increases, he can fill that up. And your other options are gonna be something like a Timrin or a Sumo Spring that's gonna go and replace your factory jounce and really just engage a little bit quicker. And sometimes those have a little bit of a harsh ride or maybe not as uh, stiff as you want them to be. And unfortunately, those are kind of, it is what it is once it's installed. And they do work great. But honestly, for someone that changes the load quite often, if you're towing a trailer or a camper the next day, it's nice to be able to have that adjustability and really fine tune it to get a great towing experience. Now, as far as installation goes, this is obviously going to be a little bit more than your typical Jones bumper replacement. Um, but that's not too hard to say that this can't be done in probably, I'd give it two to three hours. It can definitely be done in your garage or driveway. You do need to raise the suspension or at least from the jack of the truck to kind of unspring the suspension to get it in. But it's gonna use uh, bolt or brackets that bolt up to a lot of the factory spots. So there's no cutting, there's no drilling required. It's pretty straightforward. All the hardware goes together really well. The instructions are very well laid out. And also I'm gonna show you step-by-step step how to get yours installed. So let's take a look at that now. We're going to begin our installation by lowering down and removing our spare tire. Now it's not required, but having a lot more space underneath just makes it that much easier. So go ahead and if you want to, you can take your spare tire down. Now you do want to make sure you have your truck set up to do this install and what that means is you need your suspension to be unsprung. So we're going to be lifting from the hitch. I'm going to be using a trans jack since I'm up on a lift, but if you're doing this at home uh, in your garage or in your driveway, you do want to make sure you chalk the front tires because we're going to be raising from here and that way as it opens up the suspension, the axle is going to drop. That's going to give us more room to put our bags in place. So get your truck set up to be able to do that. We're gonna remove our factory Johns bumper because the bag is going to live in this area. And in order to get those out, we have two 15 millimeter nuts. So we'll take those off. We're also going to remove our studs. These are just clips and they're pretty easy to pop out. A lot of times if you use a flathead screwdriver, you can kind of get these to twist a little bit and then they should pop out fairly easily. Just like that. So if you can kind of just pry up on one side, that should allow you to spin this about a 90 degrees and that should make it pretty easy to get these out. So now we're gonna take the hardware that's supplied in the kit and these are gonna replace those studs and create a mounting point for our brackets. So best way to do this, sometimes you have to pry it open for it to slide. Um, but I found if you put a flathead screwdriver, just kind of put that lip and make sure obviously this is flush. Uh, you don't want that uh, long side sticking out. So just get that orientated. And then once you're happy with that, you just kind of twist the flathead and that's gonna kind of pry that in place and allowing us to get our hardware up later. So we'll go ahead and do that on the other one here as well. So now you're gonna to wanna to grab your upper mounting plate and there is a specific way that you need to lay this out. So uh, on our passenger side here, we're gonna have this rounded portion, this needs to face towards the inside and the driver's side is just gonna be the inverse of this. Also, there's an elongated hole. Make sure that's facing towards the cab of the truck. And we're gonna take the carriage bolts that are in the hardware kit, 
drop these in. And then we have our button head screws and these are gonna go into those new brackets that we just installed in the frame. So we'll go ahead and get these threaded on. Now we're gonna come back with a six millimeter hex head uh, and we're gonna be tightening this down with our torque wrench. Torque settings are found in the instruction manual and throughout the whole process of the install, there's gonna be quite a few torque settings. So it's definitely highly recommended to have a torque wrench on hand. And if you need one, we have them available here at E-Trailer. You can generally go to an auto parts store and rent one for free. Um, but this is gonna make sure that we have these tightened down properly, but also not too tight, causing damage to our threads or any of our brackets. We're going to begin our bag assembly. We're going to look for the side that has the brass fitting for our um, quick connect fitting here. So make sure you have this side. The roll plate will go on here. And we're going to hand tighten this on. It won't have too many rotations. And once it's hand tight, you're going to take a half inch wrench. And uh, we're going to do a one and a half turn. So just kind of keep track, have a reference point. There's one. There's a half, and these brass fittings, it's really not necessary to go too crazy on them. In fact, that can be worse for them. Now we're gonna bolt down our upper bracket to our roll plate and our bag assembly, and it is gonna be side specific. So this is gonna be our passenger side. Our air fitting is gonna face towards the inside of the frame rail. So make sure you have your bracket aligned accordingly. This raised portion should toward, face towards the cab of the truck. And we're gonna be taking uh, our bolts with a split washer and a flat washer. You're gonna find these in your kit. So go ahead, you can hand tighten these down for now. And we're gonna torque these down immediately. Now flip your bag assembly over and we're gonna put the other roll plate on. And you can see there's a little circle here in the sticker, so just make sure that's lined up. And we know that our air fitting's on this side, so we're gonna grab this bracket here and make sure that these tabs are gonna be facing the opposite side of that air fitting. So just line that up. And then we're gonna take these bolts here and we're gonna get these in place. You may have to kind of slide that roll plate around just to get it to line perfectly. To get these tightened down, we are going to be using a 730 seconds hex. So you can go ahead with your torque wrench, get that torque down. Now with our bag flipped over, we have a roll plate in place. And this is, we're gonna to wanna to put this circle here where the circle is on the sticker and that way we can kinda of know that our air fitting's on this side because it does become important when getting the rest of our hardware in. So we're gonna grab our bracket here um, and this is gonna allow us to have our U-bolts later on but we do need to put our carriage bolts through. So you'll see that these are aligned. There's one that's offset. We'll be using that later. But for now, we're gonna pass these through and they should be on facing the same way as these brackets that kind of or the bends on the bracket. So with those passed through, we're gonna make sure that we put these ends from the opposite side of this. And then we'll align that up. And then we're gonna take our beveled bolts here. And get these in place. And then we'll get these torqued down. Now we're gonna take our down stop plate here and this is gonna slide over one of our carriage bolts that we passed through and you're gonna to wanna to use that side where we have the carriage bolt hole there. 
and we'll slide that down, take our small carriage bolt, pass this up, and we're just going to kind of hand tighten this on there, uh, snug enough to where it's not going to be flopping around, but also you want to be able to kind of move this, and that way it can get adjustability once we have it under the vehicle. Now it's time to put our bag assembly in place, and the main thing that we're looking for uh, is that our carriage bolt uh, passes through our brake lines here. If we need to bend these later, we can, but that's where it's going to live. And also, you're going to want to raise up the vehicle to kind of give ourselves a gap here. You also have a little bit of adjustability with the bag. You can squish that down. So if you need just a little bit, you can compress it. So what we'll do is we'll just kind of slide this in. Again, watching our carriage bolts to make sure that everything's in place where it needs to be. And then this bottom plate, you want this to kind of slide up over here and this should bottom out kind of at our U-bolts for our leaf springs. So again, just kind of compress the bag and then we'll get that in place. And if you need to, you can also get these studs aligned while we're here. So again, just kind of compressing, slide that in place. And kind of just Push this as far over as you can. You can see this portion of the bracket is resting against this U-bolt. Just make sure it's the same on the other side. Now our carriage bolt is making contact with this hard line for the brakes. So we are going to bend this slightly so you can pull it out of this clip here. Now be, be gentle. You don't want to damage your line. And we really don't have to move it too far. Just enough to be out of the way of the hardware. So we'll get this snapped out. And just lightly pull in here. You don't want to bend it too much, but just enough to where we don't have any rubbing against that hard line. Grab your U-bolt, and we're going to slide this around um, our leaf spring stack here. And we're going to be using the top hole, so make sure you feed that through both sides. And then to finish that up, we're going to go ahead and put a flat washer and then a nylon lock nut. We'll snug down our U-bolts and using a 916 socket, we're just going to tighten side to side and make sure that it's evenly tightened. We don't have to get crazy here, we just want it snug. So make sure that your carriage bolts are passing in from that top bracket. And once you have those all aligned, we'll take our serrated flange nuts and get these hand tightened on. Now you may have to lower that jack down for these to pop in place, uh, but go ahead Get these all hand tightened on and then go back with your torque wrench and torque them all down. Now we're going to take our bottom part of our axle strap here and feed your carriage bolts through. And we're going to be finishing this up with a flat washer and then a nylon lock nut. And kind of similar to what we did with our U-bolt, we're going to be tightening this evenly. And you really don't have to get too crazy as far as tightening down, but it's very important that we make sure that our bracket is sitting exactly where we want it as we tighten all these down. So it does look like it sits at an angle that kind of tilts towards the cab, but you can see it's pretty well parallel with the leaf spring. So just double check that. And as you tighten things, just make sure that it's sitting exactly where you want it. And we'll probably have to swap over to a ratcheting wrench because these studs are pretty long. But I'll go ahead and start snugging this down. So with these tightened down, I am going to have to swap over uh, to our torque wrench with a, I have a line wrench attachment. You can use a crow's foot and that's going to allow us to actually get that bolt torqued down. Um, now, Something I'll point out too is if you have a rear sway bar, you are going to end up having to cut off this excess stud. Uh, we don't have that here, so we're going to move along and go through, get these torqued down. And once we get these long carriage bolts torqued, we can actually go ahead, change our torque setting, and head up to that U-bolt, get those torqued down as well. Now once we have everything torqued down, if we're happy with the way that our bag is sitting, we can go ahead and tighten down uh, our carriage bolt that we passed down previous. So let's go ahead and do that.
So with our bag assemblies in place, now's a good time to make sure that we have clearance of all of our lines. We're not gonna be rubbing on any of this and causing damage to our braking components or anything else. Uh, so go ahead and make sure that you have all those clearances. And then we're gonna get ready to start running our air lines to the back. Our bags are installed, but we do need to run our air lines still. And this is where it kind of comes down to where do you wanna mount it. Uh, you can pick up brackets that allow you to put that on your hitch. You can put it in your gas tank door. It's kind of up to you. A lot of times people use it as a license plate stud and that way you can mount your license plate. You put the cap on it, it looks really clean yet it's still very functional. But what I'm gonna do is with a 1964 drill bit, that should be big enough for me to drill this out. Now there is a nub on the backside that I'll end up cutting out, but this will allow us to make sure that this is gonna fit in there. Might have to go a little bit bigger or just kind of waller this out. Main thing is we're gonna have hardware to tighten this down. We just need to be able to pass our Schrader valve through. Do that on the other side and then we'll meet on the back where we'll cut that nub off. Now to get these out, you might be able to get a cutting utensil in here, maybe a small Dremel wheel, um, but it, if, it's gonna get pretty tight here. So what I'm gonna use is just a, a small pair of uh, some snips here and just kind of cut some of the pieces back and that way we can get it as flat as possible. This one I kind of trimmed out and then I'm going to go back with the sanding bit and just kind of make sure that that's sitting flat. The main thing is we have enough hardware to be able to adjust that and have it stick out far enough. And that way we can actually get a fitting on our Schrader valve. We're gonna get these installed and there is gonna be a sequence to follow as far as the hardware goes. So you're gonna put your nut on first. You then have a star washer and that's gonna help bite into that back plastic. We'll feed this end through and then I'm going to put our rubber washer on it and that's gonna kinda of help not only hold it in place but also as we tighten down, just kinda of squeeze it all together. And after our rubber washer, we'll put our flat washer and then finish that up with the other nut. Now, you don't have to get too crazy uh, as far as tightening down, um, but you can use a 13 millimeter socket to just kind of snug it in place, and that should hold it in. Now, you can also adjust that nut on the back side, so if you don't want it sticking out as far, or you need to stick out a little bit further, you can adjust those as well and get you that custom fit that you're looking for. Now you want to make sure that you can get your license plate in there as well and still be able to put your caps on and also be able to fill it. Um, so double check. You may have to drill out uh, the holes here on your license plate just a little bit. You can use the nut to tighten that behind uh, or in between the uh, nut and the washer there. That's up to you. You do have these plastic caps here which are going to keep any dirt and debris out of those Schrader valves. But again, just make sure that you have enough clearance to be able to actually get the air in those fittings. Now at this point we have both of those attached. We can kind of find our center of our loop of air line and we're gonna make a cut. We should have more than enough on each side. Now we are gonna be having this in a dual path system, meaning you have control of each individual bag. This should be enough. I'm using a tubing cutter. This is gonna make sure that it doesn't squeeze the line as you're trying to cut. If you just try to use a pair of snips, it's gonna compress that and make it to where it's not gonna be a nice clean circle for those push connect fittings and you might have leaks. Now I'm gonna start routing these back. I'll get it all set up. And there's gonna be a few things near our exhaust that we're gonna to have to take a look at, but I'll show you how to get that all done. So I started routing our lines. And the main thing that I try to do is make sure we have room for our spare tire and also be away from any moving suspension and also exhaust. We don't want to damage our airline. So a lot of times following factory wire looms or even using factory clips is kind of ideal for protection. Now, something you'll wanna do when you get to the exhaust Figure out where that airline is going to be right next to this little re uh, resonator and this heat shrink actually slides over it and that's included in the kit. So you're going to want to put that in a spot that's going to be pretty close to the exhaust and that's just going to kind of help protect it from that heat. We're also going to be using a heat shield that we're going to be installing to kind of add to that protection as well. Now, as far as your extra airline, you can do two things. You can trim it to where it's gonna go into that fitting. What I like to do is actually coil up a little bit of extra and zip tie that up before plugging it in. And that way, if you do ever have to 
uh, make a new connection, or if you want to tie it in later to airbags or a compressor, you have that ability. So having a little bit of extra line is not a problem. So I'll get this all zip tied up and show you how it looks. So I've rolled up my excess here and zip tied it to where it sits nice against the frame rail and that way it's not going to make contact with the exhaust. And to get our airline fitting into our push connect, you want to make sure that it's seated properly. And that's going to just allow you to know that it's bit in um, and that's just going to be a nice push and you should feel it kind of slide in there. Give it a quick tug just to make sure it doesn't come out. And now that we have this in place, make sure you go ahead, do the other side of the truck, and then we'll get our heat shield installed. To get the heat shield to go around the resonator, which is, seems to be the closest spot to the airbag, we do need to bend these tabs, and that's gonna give it a little bit of air space in between the resonator and the heat shield. We can also bend it to kind of contour, and there's hose clamps included, but the resonator is obviously pretty large, so you may have to double up your hose clamps so you can attach those together. And this will just slide around it, and these tabs will kind of hold that in place. So I'll go ahead and get this mounted up. And the main thing is you want this facing, tor facing towards the airbag, but also make sure you have clearance. You should be able to pass your hand through your airbag is in between that and your heat shield. Main thing is, as your airbag moves, you don't want that to contact anything. Heat shield is in place. Now, I recommend making sure that if there's any spot that's actually sitting against that resonator, just bend that out. You don't want that rattling when the truck is idling or driving down the road. Now, you can also cut off the excess hose clamp too. You wanna to make sure that that's not gonna be rattling around as you drive. Officially, our airbags are installed, but we need to make sure that they're roadworthy before just taking it out and using them. And the best way to do that is do a leak check. So we're going to fill the bags up. You can kind of put whatever you want in it. I normally do about 60 PSI, so it's a little uh, decent amount of pressure on that. And first, we're going to listen for leaks, but also spray it down with some soapy water and really see if those bubbles form. And that way we can fix it and make sure it's ready to go. So a little dishwater solution here. You can go pretty heavy, spray that down, and you're going to give it a minute or two. Wait for large bubbles to form. It's kind of normal, obviously, to have the uh, foam bubbles here from the soap, but you're really going to start to notice uh, big ones forming, and that's a sign that your air is leaking. So spray not only the push connect, but also where it feeds into the bag. You can also check your Schrader valves as well and look for those air, air bubbles to pop up. If they don't, well, then you're good to go. Now, if those air bubbles are forming, normally the best way to fix that is let the air out of the bags, make sure they're not pressurized. And then you're gonna to want to take that push connect fitting and it's got a sleeve, just push that in, push the line in a little bit and it should be able to pull out as you're holding that sleeve back. And go ahead and give it a nice new cut with a tubing cutter and then try to reseat it. And a lot of times that should fix it. And that was a look and installation of the Airlift Load Lifter 5000 airbags for the rear axle on a 2020 Ford F-350 Super Duty.